everyone, I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Fasten your seatbelts for one of the great divisional rivalries in the NFL. This is the first of two games between these teams this year, and you know it's going to be entertaining. It's the Browns going up against the Ravens. With kickoff straight ahead, let's check in with the two men who will be calling tonight's game. As we say hello to Brandon Guy and Charles Davis. Larry, we are coming to you from the heart of Baltimore, nestled between Russell Street and I-395. We're at M&T Bank Stadium. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at this Raven team as they get ready here. They come in off a loss in the opener last week. That one was on the road. Now they get their first taste here of home cooking. And what they're hoping to do is feed off the energy of the home crowd. Great tailgate, great fan support. Let's see if they can put it to good use. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. The children will groan. It's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. This is taken at the three, and he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here come the Ravens with their first look on offense, and they'll be led out by their third-year quarterback. They'll come out in the pistol. And he'll give it here to his running back. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And how about this wide receiving core, Charles? Well, I was in the hotel watching a little film, and you popped your head in and said, these receivers are pretty good from what I can tell. You're exactly right. Can't wait to see them do their thing out on the field. See if they stay on the ground for second down. He'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And we get a peek at the defensive starters, and it's a unit that really needs to do better than they did last week. So I would expect them to come out with a lot more emotion this week, flying around, trying to establish a new tone, because last week they didn't feel good about it all. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Let's go! Green, 39! Green! From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. How did he stay on his feet? And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. To the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> well, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. The Ravens send their punter out now. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And we get a glance here at their leader. The man who will be calling the plays under center. This time for the tailback. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Handoff as they run the counter play. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. And this offensive unit should have a lot of juice coming off the big output that they had one week ago. Nothing like confidence, is there? When you've played well the week before, you can't wait to get back on the field and do it again. Second down following the run. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it? I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. As we get a look at the defensive starters, the secondary, they're certainly going to need to be on their toes in this one. And you know me really well. Where do I start analyzing a game? From the secondary. And these guys have to be on point today. They're facing a high-powered attack. Second down, they'll try to run the counter. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Seven yards on the carry, make it third and four coming up. Well, that's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on the running play on first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. Eight yards there on a first down. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. 
Now a handoff here to his running back. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. And he'll give it here to his running back. One yard, the official pickup there. So it's going to set up third and nine. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Looking for someone to throw to. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. And right now I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. So not exactly jubilation over on that visiting sideline, but at least a high five or two for their kicker as he gets them the first points of the night here on the opening drive. And three points are not to be underestimated. You're on the road, under the lights, national TV audience, you want to come out and look good, and that's a good start right there. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't right turn now. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away, and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And Wow, now you've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. Ten yards still left on second down. Back to throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the second time. time 57 yards the official distance and the offense will take over with a new set of downs and the Browns offense back out there ready to take over and they split the uprights last time for three they've got the lead they're not going to play this conservative they're, they're not hoping for another field goal they're hoping for a touchdown I'm with you on that one I like where your head is I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right trying to sit on a lead and play that way that doesn't work too well for most teams Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the game. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Back to throw now on second and ten. That's just flat out a terrific play because it's rare that you see a hitch route batted down. That means someone read that one really well and was right on the spot when the ball got to the receiver. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. On third down, he 
He'll drop to throw. He's going to float this one. And got his man complete. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A big play there. An 80-yard touchdown. And the Browns add six to their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now the Browns' defensive unit trots back out. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And that defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying to keep it short here. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. All right, here we go. Green, 30. They'll run it now out of the gun. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Obviously, they didn't get everything they wanted on that completion, but they put themselves in a spot where you've got to at least think about going for it. I know where we are on the field, but still, you've got to think about it, don't you? The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense. And they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And right, we'll see if they can do just that. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. And on second and 10 now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But, boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have the first down here as he's up to the 15. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there.
They'll give it to him right up the gut. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him free on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Nice play, nice play, baby. Come on, let's go. 38. One quarter down. 10 zip our score. But we're back to Baltimore after this. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. The Browns with the football to begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. Here we go, And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. And partner, in a lot of short yardage situations, you'll see the linebackers step up into the gaps, what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, to make sure they take away all spaces, all creases. That one worked really well for them. They only needed a yard, instead went backwards. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And three and out on the last drive, no points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot positions. more than normal, put them in some tough spots, but what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Now a handoff here to his running back, and he showed some fancy footwork on the juke, but then quickly taken down. Defense. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. They'll look to throw here on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Ravens were able to show off their quick strike ability. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career. And that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Playing well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm, throw the football, feel good about things, keep things moving in the right direction. Right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. And we'll see if that continues. A good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. Here we go. Right They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Out of the gun now on third down. Throwing right, and that's complete. Holding offense. 
So there you go, holding by the offense, and that'll push him back. Changes everything now as you try and figure out what your playbook has for you. Longer yardage situations, tougher to execute and pick up first downs. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The Browns send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And now the Browns get ready as they head back out there. And a tight ball game here. And in these close ones, every drive becomes magnified. And we don't want to overuse the word critical, but it feels that way as they head out there for this possession. They need to get the ball back and give their offense a chance to get them totally back into this game. We'll see if the defense can do just that here. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. And they'll run it here. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh shot of down. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And to give this time to the tailback. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make it. Through. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Ravens have taken the lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. And that makes it 14-10. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. 
continue to try and up his game. But just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me. We'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. They'll set up a throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. He'll go down. They got him for a sack. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up fourth. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. A uh, very good return that time. 18 yards, and the Ravens, they'll take over. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And when an offense is doing a nice job selling the play-action pass, a lot of responsibility shifts to the linebackers. They're the ones that have to determine run or pass and get to the proper places on the field. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And they get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll fall forward to the 29-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. You know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Wide open receiver complete. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. In the red zone this time. First down, they'll run it on the draw play. Officially, no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, there was no blitz. That was just a draw play that, to be frank, didn't fool anybody. Did we hear the entire stadium screaming draw? Because <laughs> they, it felt they like saw everybody they was saw all it. over that play, and the defense won that battle. Detroit! Detroit! Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Baltimore after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Personal foul, face mask, defense. 
And a big face mask penalty here, 15 yards. You never want to get your hands up in the face mask area because your fingers can get tangled up there, and that can hurt you as a player. Goal line offense, something they've really been emphasizing in practice lately. Now they have a chance here to put all that hard work to use. First and goal from the wall. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. It's the fullback. His first touchdown of the new season. And the Ravens will extend their lead. And from the one-yard line, they didn't try and reinvent the wheel, do anything cute. They just gave it to the big back. You almost get the sense that if you can't get it in from the one-yard line with your big guy carrying the football, you'll question yourself the rest of the day. They got it done. Now the extra point try forthcoming. It's good, and it's 21-10. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the 8. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Well, that was an interesting little chess match there because the offense went empty set. No running backs in the backfield, so they're trying to get people out into a route pretty quickly. But guess what? The defense sees that. They go ahead and move, it, move themselves into a blitzing situation and come right after the quarterback. They had more guys there than they could block. Side, it's complete. He's got it. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. They'll look to throw. He's got time. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this thing. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They're going to try and throw. And he comes back with one complete. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. 17 yards on the pickup. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Second down following the incompletion. Here we go. They'll look to throw again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Back to throw now on first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On play action, they'll throw. 
And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their dangerous wide receiver as the first half is winding down. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Extra point attempt to follow here. And he's got it to make this a 21-17 game. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. This will be taken in at the one. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20-yard line. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Ravens are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Browns just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's roll the highlights. End of the first quarter. The pass out of the gun will be completed. And this two-play drive goes for a touchdown, pushing the lead to 10. Ravens have it on second and five. Quick pass is complete, and this long run goes for a touchdown, cutting the deficit to three. Midway through the second quarter, coverage breaks down here, and 29 yards later, he'll go in for the score. They're now on top by four. Ravens take over late in the second. Pass will be completed out of the gun, and he'll end up picking up 18 yards on the play. time left on the clock. He'll go to the ground here, and he kept off the long drive with the touchdown. Ravens go up by 11, staying late in the second. The pass will be caught over the middle, and he cap off the eight play drive with the TD. Browns trail now by four. And with that, we'll wrap up our halftime report and